I got a question about projecting a dirt road texture or dirt road material down onto another mesh uh, and having that material follow a spline. Um, the question was specifically how to do that in Cinema 4D using Redshift. So I looked into it and I think I came up with a pretty good solution. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a sweep to define the mesh that I'm going to project UVs from or transfer the UVs from. But in order to transfer those UVs, I actually need to store them somewhere, generate them and store them. So I'm going to do that in a vertex color tag. If I make a shader field, and I'll call this one along, and I add a gradient to that, you can see that it's going, and this is, this is actually going across, but if we switch this from uh, 2DU to 2DV, we can now see that it's running black to white along the sweep. We need to make sure that the interpolation of all knots is linear. And we want to make this red. So we're generating essentially a U coordinate. Now for the sweep, this is actually the V coordinate as we know from having set this to 2D V. But in our case, um, for the road texture that I'm using, the tire tracks run in the U coordinate along the U. So uh, we want this to be the U coordinate. Um, so we have our along, and then we'll create another shader field above that. We'll call this across, and we'll add another gradient. This one will be also linear. Set this to green. And instead of max, we want to add these. Although actually it doesn't matter. Max would work as well since they're on entirely different color channels, but it just feels better using add. Um, so that is that is our, essentially our coordinate system uh, for the dirt road material. Um, we need to transfer that from this sweep down onto this object that has our soil material currently. Um, and the material here is actually a, the blend material between soil and the dirt road. So if I, if I increase the blend color here to white, now we're looking at the dirt road texture, which you can see is running on that U coordinate. Um, but we will leave this as the soil for now. Uh, actually, no, let's not. Since we're starting to build the coordinate system for the dirt road. Let's change this over so we're looking at the dirt road. And let us add a vertex color tag to the plane. Now on this vertex color tag we're going to drag the vertex color from the road UVs over. And instead of the nearest mode we're going to switch to average. We also we need to disable distance fall off because we don't want our coordinates tending to go towards zero, right? As, as this gets smaller, like we're transferring from the points and we don't want that. We need this to be large enough that it encompasses everything on the target mesh. I'm gonna set the radius arbitrarily to 200. Um, you can play with this radius to get a value you like, but here you can kind of see where the dirt road is going to get mapped to. Although if we preview it, it's still not getting mapped to that yet, because what we have to do in our dirt road material is we have to modify the texture coordinates for these textures. So if we read in using vertex attribute, we read in this vertex color map. And let's just take a look at that here. So that's reading the vertex color data from the tag. Um, also, there's a, an important bit. Let me step aside for a moment. In your project settings, you are going to need to make sure that you are either using Open Color IO if you're using one of the newer versions of uh, Cinema 4D. You're using Open Color IO for the color management, or you are using a linear input profile. If you are not using the linear input profile here and you're using sRGB, 
it is going to apply uh, a gamma curve to the data on this vertex color because it's essentially it's assuming that it's a color when we're actually using it as coordinates and coordinates should not get a gamma function applied to them so you need to make sure that you're either on linear in the old color management mode or using open color io i like open color io so i'm going to use that now the vertex attributes that we're looking at here the uvs these are these look like absolute uv coordinates right um, these texture tags don't accept absolute uv coordinates they accept a uv offset so in the uv remapping there's an offset value so we need to get the original uvs for this mesh using the state node if we hook the uv coordinate output of the state node up this is the original uv coordinates of the mesh if we subtract the original from our essentially target absolute coordinates we get this and this should work for our remap value so I'm gonna hook this up into our UV remap offset for each of these textures whoops so this is the um, UV coordinates transferred from the sweep with the original UV coordinates on this mesh subtracted from them and then that value is passed into the UV remap offset so now let's hook the material back up to the surface and it looks like we have a dirt road running along that path now it's just a straight line so it's not all that impressive let's see if we can um, grab a point on this spline which is kind of hard to do and move it It'd be nice if we could see the points in this preview as well but there you go we're now we now have live updating uh, UVs transferred from one mesh to the other for the purposes of this texture now you'll notice some oddities at the edges here and it's not blending with the underlying soil um, material and so that's where we have to go back to our blend material here and we need to add to our plane a vertex map tag and we will just drag the sweep itself in here set it to surface and give it the same radius that we gave to the vertex color tag here so now we have two sources of data we have our uh, coordinates that we're transferring in the vertex color which fade off into black which black is zero zero that is a uv coordinate so it is looking up the texture here and it's kind of smearing across the texture as it goes from green to black um, and but this vertex map allows us to blend before we get to that so let's in our blend material bring a vertex attribute node in drag our vertex map in there connect the out scaler to the blend color now let's give it a preview Ta -da! and now for just to make things a little easier to interact with this I'm going to actually switch over to the RS render view and I'm going to grab our road path here let's start moving things around Ooh. Uh, you will note um, because these are all using radiuses uh, if the path if the sweep gets too far away from the surface it will lose its data um, now you could use that as an effect here uh, because we, ha we do have a vertex map that is constraining it uh, you could sort of fade in and out that road depending on on how close or far away the point is from the surface right so but it's, it's just something to keep in mind that you, you'll want to um, make sure these are all close to the surface if you want the road to be visible Move this up here 
and we can have we can have these hanging uh, ends here as well. That like because we have the vertex map, it just kind of fades into nothing here. It's not a very effective fade, but if I bring this up a little bit, there we get a nice fade. You can um, close this spline, but you end up with uh, one of the issues um, with this method. And that is that the UV coordinates have like a, a discontinuity essentially in them that, that um, if, if we set this spline to closed, close the spline, initially it looks like, hey, that worked, awesome. Got our, got our racetrack. However, if you notice right here, if I zoom in here where it goes from the beginning to the end of the spline, we actually have lots of repetitions of the texture all squeezed into this small little space. And if I select our UV coordinate here, you can see probably why. It's going from full red to no red. So that's, that's from one side of the texture to the exact opposite side of the texture in a very small amount of space. So, um, not a huge problem if you can hide that with a tree or a rock or something, but it's there and you need to be aware of it um, if you're using this method. Uh, I suppose you could maybe just do that <laughs> to hide it. Um, yeah. So it's a pretty effective method of cre projecting UVs um, with some limitations. Um, and... I look forward to seeing uh, what you guys come up with using this method. Um, I should also mention if these overlap, you'll note that there's a blending here between the coordinates, which can cause some odd swimmy texture nonsense, right? So you're going to want to try and keep these uh, roads from overlapping. Well, you don't have to use this for roads. These, these UV coordinates, you want to keep them from overlapping with one another. All right, this is my paperclip track. Sweet.